I really want to honor what you're doing, and it's part of a continuum. I'm remembering Greg, and I'm remembering Vicky, and in the 70s, when we were all poverty stricken and living in shitty little warehouses in uh, Oak Cliff. When we were what? poverty stricken? <laughs> <laughs> Still, okay, yeah, well, okay, but we were. We were shaping our world, and we shaped our world through the interaction of all of us that were semi-activists, being artists and residents for the state and for the cities. And our, our social activity was motivated by a lot of the things that you just mentioned about seeing the poverty, but we worked it through our community. Dave Hickey talked about a clean, well-lighted space was a really good place to show show art and be art. And I think what we've all done in our little ways is make little clean, well-lighted spaces where art can happen. And that's putting the rubber to the road. Bert's over in uh, the Cedars, and he's helping make artist spaces there. We were on Bishop Arts. You've been just like, I can't tell you how many families she's supported by just being active through the community. We all work small. So it's not a new phenomenon, but it's one that, let's say, is being focused on a little differently. Uh, thanks, guys. I'm, I'm a better artist because of you guys. Just, just another perspective. Late 60s, early 70s. First book came out from UT Press, written by a gentleman by the name of Jacinto Carate. Asinto uh, headed up UT San Antonio, the arts program. He defined Mexican American artists. The artists that were working back then were offended because many considered themselves Chicano artists. So they would meet every weekend, all kinds of varieties, but they would meet in order to try to define themselves. If you read the literature about all the salons, historically, the discussions that have gone on with some of the masters, old collectors, the discussion, the inquiry tonight, is the same inquiry that has been made time and time again. What Janiel said, again, is you know what you're doing. You know if it is truly from the creative spirit and your heart and your passion. But if you feel that you must define before someone else defines, then you do it as a group. In the Hispanic community, before these meetings, they had an organization called Consafos. And those were a group of artists that are in every museum today, every museum around the United States. They were young punks like myself back then. But it's not that important if what drives you is your passion and your creativity. That's all I have to say. Sorry. You're hmm. not still a young punk? <laughs> no. <laughs> He's just a punk. He's just a punk. <laughs> and, and after you do that, I, would, I would like to continue that conversation about whether it's important or not, though. I, just, to, just to give it a little flavor. But, but, yeah. Um, I wanted to comment on the aesthetics concept. I think there has to be one uh, because the beauty of art is not only in the visual part, it's in the experience. So I guess if you're doing a project, whatever, an artistic project that engages the community, you have to make, generate something that makes a memorable experience. Like you said, like in communities that you were saying is crime and uh, stealing, that's the perception, then you do a project, you create a certain kind of order, and all of that creates an experience. And even the fact that there's some kind of, uh, uh, like a map of what the uh, activity is gonna be, that, that in itself is part of the final product. Um, so the fact that you're involving so many senses in a project that goes to so many people. I think it's not, it's not the same as saying that 
oh, Target is going to donate like 1,000 toys today. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining myself, but I mean, it's, it's not that simple to define artists or to uh, uh -oh. aesthetics or to leave this out of the <laughs> conversation. No, this is great because I'm, you know, this is a perfect opportunity to, to explore some answers because, mm -hmm. and I think the, the audience probably has better potential to do that than I do. Because, so, I, so to your comment though, I'm just curious, and how do you, I mean, you just described an experience or something that had a certain kind of aesthetic to it. So what make, what's, what's different about that than, um, you know, than, than the developers who are developing in West Dallas that are, you know, kind of, what, uh, who are those guys that are splashing the buildings with bright colors and those kinds of things? Uh, whatever, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, but they're developers, you know, they're not <laughs> claiming. Well, if I don't see anything surprising or architecturally pleasing or, or like a landmark, you cannot compare a building, a regular building, with uh, the opera by Rene Sofiano. I mean, uh, everybody can say that. Everybody has to say that it's a beautiful building. Is that a beautiful Palatrava bridge? Say, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might not be beautiful or not for someone, but yeah. you cannot deny that there's some thought yeah. in terms of all the engineering and the <coughs> aesthetics, the colors, everything in yeah. it, too. Otherwise, he wouldn't be who he is. <coughs> no, I mean, I'm just asking because I'm trying to figure that yeah. out. You know, because it's, yeah. you know, because, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, artists do a lot of stuff. Yeah. We do a lot of stuff, but other people do stuff too. Yeah. yeah. You know, everybody's doing stuff and interesting things. You know, I just had a phone conversation, a conference call today with a woman who's running a Alaska um, uh, housing authority that was just amazing, you know, to, to, to hear like the complexity of how she maneuvers and the things she, it was just, you know, it's like, you know, I mean, is there an aesthetic there that I should be paying attention to as an art piece, or is it? That you decide. You know, I mean, you know, so it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a complex thing. But that, can the way someone conducts themselves be aesthetically pleasing? Could that be part of their art form? Just, this you know, is right? an art It could be part of their aesthetic, maybe not pleasing. <laughs> 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 is there a better and a worse way? Is that, could that be, you know, I mean, you have to conduct all these different social interactions and put them together, and obviously there's just some talents and art, art form involved in that, and I think maybe that's where the aesthetic lies, the uh, social engagement. Greg, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start taking over your time. <laughs> 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 They're, they're <laughs> any here to address you. Uh, uh, could you talk a little bit about the benefits and challenges um, operating as artists as opposed to soci sociologists or anthropologists? Um, uh -huh. And and how how do you base objectively your results? Uh -huh. Let's see. I don't, I, I don't separate out like that. I mean, I, I'm not compartmentalized in my head. Um, you know, I, I, I make art. I've done public art, which is different, in fact, than the work that I typically do in my studio practice. I use my creativity to do my job every day at the cultural center, because you better damn well be creative if you ain't getting the $2 to do what you, you know, you need a million to do. Um, I use that same creativity to form collaborations with all kinds of people that are not necessarily artists, but that who I need to have in my life and in my world to make things happen for the people that I'm interested in and you know, serving. Um, for me, it's, it's what is the urgency? You know, where's the urgency coming from? You know, and that's, that's, that determines how I will respond to any given situation. But, but I guarantee you that all of it is pulling from my basic creativity because you know that's that's who I am. But I don't I, I can't I can't put in little neat boxes. You know, here's what my art So you don't use an artistic license? You don't take advantage of that? Like you know, I mean that's just I, I, if I'm hearing what you're saying it's like, you know, when you 
when you approach something as an artist, just like, you know, like, yeah, people will often say, well, oh, that's just an artist. You know, and you get a, you get a lot of leeway, you know, when you, you know, I mean, and that's, and that's a very real thing, right? Because if you look at, like, from a, from a, a, um, a funding standpoint, you know, for an artist, like, I ha always have this conversation on our steering committee with uh, translation. It's this thing about, you know, and particularly Sarah, because she's a, she's, a, she's a project manager, and she has to produce certain things, right? But me as an artist, I can go up, oh, I changed my mind. <laughs> you know, and that, you know, and, and I can and I can kind of get away with that a little bit, as opposed to the person who is has the responsibility of you know of showing certain kinds of results, because you know the the, the result for the artist can be very it can move you can you can wiggle in. But if I'm not mistaken, if that's what you're right. It seems like uh, if you're fundraising under different guises, you may. Uh, you may experience difficulties that, as artists, you can overstep or circumvent. In some ways. I'm thinking of um, some of like Mel Chin's work, the way he was working scientifically and was trying to raise funds, but found difficulty in the scientific realm. Maybe he didn't have the right kind of merits, but then was a lot more successful when he um, then approached people in the art realm. I, I think Mel is a, is a good example of that because, you know, but also he uses his tools that way, right? Right. So when he talks about lead contamination, you know, who wants to talk about lead contamination? You know, listen to science scientists talk about, you know, all the blah 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 blah. Nobody wants to listen to that. But when you know Mel kind of like does his tap dance as an as an artist, you know, and throw in a few hundred dollar bill kind of workshops <laughs> for people, then all of a sudden people want to talk about it. You know, and so it's a different kind of, yeah. He did the same thing the, the, with product placement and subliminal right. product placement and, you know, developing, a, you know, a set of videos along that, you know, the subtle subliminal kind of messages and how we use that. So he uses the strategies and tactics of those, but he does it with his artistic license, which is... And if a scientist was to do that, they'd probably get like D certified. Or right. <laughs> so I think two of the two of the themes, like, and Miss Meeks just mentioned it, that that. You can tell how young she is. She called me Miss Meeks. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody um, calls you Meeks. <laughs> so so, but one of them is a like in in what what paradigm are we talking, right? So this idea of blurring it, social practice, blurring the lines, is really kind of in this Western construct when you talk about indigenous people or African, the aesthetic of life and art are one and the same. It's not, it wasn't separated. And so now that Eurocentric, white, you know, Western culture is now, oh, it can all be combined. <laughs> it's a conversation, but that was already solved, you know, before we even created the systems that we have, I think. I mean, so I think sometimes we get into a place where it's a little bit, we've, we've overcomplicated it in trying to compartmentalize everything and then bringing it back together. So that was just one thought I had. And the other thought is, in, in the whole idea of naming, it is important and it isn't, but it, the, the fundamental issue is around power, right? Even whether you're an artist or a sociologist, or, I mean, what's the difference between Rick Lowe doing the translation project and Sarah or Greg or Daryl or who, you know, Clyde or whoever, right, who, who isn't, who doesn't have that power, uh, prestige, et cetera, around it. And I think, you know, it's the same for me, my, my education is more an education philosophy I think, wait, so wait, 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 I, think, I think instead of like placing it between me you Greg you know, everybody I just said like, our names. Like, okay, but I, it was a, an interesting way to look at that it's like what would be the difference if I came to do it without the Nasher right oh so absolutely no absolutely yeah, yeah. There, 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 there. but but you have the power you have the power to be 
positioned by the Nasher. The Nasher, and also Vicky, and I mean, all of it, and that's generational, right? That there's a lot of issues that play into it, but the Nasher isn't asking, and I just named our names, but it could be Tim, you know, from from around the way, who lives in Vickery Meadow, who, who had, okay, or Michelle, point, who had the wait, idea wait, for but, it but all along. But the point of power is not, the, the point of power connects to the institution. Right? I mean, so the point is, you know, could anybody, I but, mean, anybody, well, could, could anybody come into this town or anybody in this town pull, this pull off. off a project like that without having the institution. some well, so, kind of institutional support that right. gives it the weight? That so so my, the well, point is not even just some that, kind right. of institutional support. It's the particular institution right. that is doing this has the standing in this community because for instance the African American Museum couldn't have pulled this off. Right. Okay? Let's just put that out there. It's it's not any institution. Right. It's the particular institution. Right. And you can't separate that. Well absolutely. I mean yeah. just on the on the practical side of getting permits, when you throw the Nasher name around you get stuff done a lot faster than you know anybody else. But I I was gonna say like in education, right? The whole, the, the same conversation was around popular education, Paulo Ferrer, the pedagogy of the press, and this idea of everybody has the power to name their world, and that, that is how you free yourself from oppression, is being able to name it and, not, and say, this is who I am, this is where I am, and, and that changes the dynamic instead of being somebody who's told, this is what you are, whatever else. And I think our artists in that way have the power and flexibility to move in, in ways that other other um, um, disciplines don't have, right? In the sense of you're able to frame things in a way that's more fluid than you know. I mean, or even architects, right? Like the the what's the guy um, who has the black architecture project? Like even uh, like he had to leave his discipline to even he had to enter the art world to even be able to be critical and talk about his dis the discipline of architecture. So it's like art has this this the space or the freedom to be able to talk about other disciplines in in a way that other disciplines don't allow. Well, that goes back to, I mean, Gordon Mata Clark, you know, and having to leave the architecture idea and, you know, and then he has, I think like Nato Thompson talks about, you know, like energy and power structures from, you know, kind of a, like from assembling them in creative ways. And then Greg Chalette talks about them more as an undercurrent dark matter that happens. So that I, I think that happens anyway. I mean, people figure out. I mean, a lot of it is, uh, a lot of, I think a lot of our lives are about, uh, you know, figuring out how to lead a creative lifestyle. Yes. When we're talking about real estate, it's all about power, and it's also about stages. I'm one of those, um, a weirdo that nobody had ever heard of, but I happen to be an artist, a social science professional, and my background is, or my profession is real estate marketing. And so all neighborhoods, there's not a neighborhood in Dallas that didn't start out with an amazing art, um, social happening. And, um, and nothing, Bishop Arts, Uptown, Deep Ellum, it all started with artists going, you know, pulling together and doing something socially fabulous. And then it just builds upon that in stages. I came along and was hired by a neighborhood called Uptown that nobody had ever heard of in 2001 because I changed the name. Um, and so I took what had been built, which was not a lot by the time I took it. Um, West Village wasn't there, Hotel Dollar wasn't there, but we did have some structure. And we had 40 art galleries. And so my job was to make it a rebranded. 
So as an artist, as a social science professional, and as a real estate professional, you take all those elements and you don't have to really be tied to one particular thing. It was a beautiful thing. I could pick and choose anytime I wanted to. Real estate, the art of restaurants and eating, um, the galleries, the performance art, the beauty, the history, it was 125 years old. My family happened to be from that neighborhood, so it was a very meaningful thing for me. But we're not, we're not talking about one thing, we're talking about something that will take years, many layers and many stages and many talents. And I don't know how that all fits in, but I think it's all social at every step of the way. And even though we're starting at Vickery Meadow, and there's you know the same challenges that were there in the 80s when we still, my family still owned property there. It was a great neighborhood, and that's what's going on in Vickery Meadows. And so my concern is always to take too much away from the neighborhood, which is what I hope doesn't happen. Yeah, that's interesting. I'd like to hear you talk about the role of the outsider. The, the, outsider. the role of the outsider. Who's the outsider? Well, if you come in from, as you come in, so coming in to Vickery Meadows from Houston. Now, I mean, I'm, I'm an, I mean, I, I can talk to that. I do it too. I mean, I'm not like, it's, you know. I think that's, I think a lot of people, that's the fear, is, is, is that what will happen is, what, what are you taking from that? Yes. Let me just make a comment because I run a lot of the workshops and the way we decided to approach workshops was not like come in there and te tell people, oh, this is what you should make or this is what Americans will like or this is what you should do. It's like we approach it like, well, what do you like to do? Listen. What are you already making at home? What's your experience from, from your world? And just the other day I had a lady from Iraq bring me um, she was explaining she does something with soap, and I was like, great, bring one, I'd love to see what it is. And she brought me this beautiful ribbon-wrapped soap that looks like a basket with these little ribbon flowers in it. And it's like a sachet, and she puts it together with straight pens. I don't have to teach her anything. All I do is help, I see myself not as a teacher, but as somebody who helps somebody refine something they're already doing. A facilitator? And Yes, yeah. that's that's purely yeah. it. I never and I bring yeah. in ideas, and they're usually teaching me most of the time. Well, that that's the, that's that's the key, I think. And uh, and I, and I've always said this about um, you know I, I I think that that when when artists are working on projects and you know kind of community or socially engaged projects, I think that that if the artist is not getting something out of it, if they're not getting some balance between what they give and what they receive, it's, it's not, you know, it's, I'm, I'm not going to say it's not a good project, but, but in general it's problematic because, you know, if you're, if you're doing something that the intention is to empower uh, people, then people feel empowered when they have some skin in the game or when they have something they can contribute. And if you're, and if you're, if the approach that you take is one of that, you have answers and you're bringing answers, then you're not giving people the opportunity to really, you know, uh, kind of realize their own value, you know, in the in the process. That's that that point can't be overemphasized because a lot of what I think I see is people who will come into a community and they're energized and they want to do and blah blah blah, but they don't really know how to listen and hear what that community is about. They don't know how to just be silent and let the information come to you about what that community can do with you, you know, how you can be useful to that community. And, and that's the thing I think that most troubles me about this whole idea of this social practice being taught to people. And blah, because what I know about, I mean, I'm a, I'm a community development. But that's what I do. I, you know, I, I'm basically developing communities. Um, I know that if I don't have the ability to be still and listen, then I'm never going to get the buy-in from that community. You can't teach that. 
I mean, you know, you can't teach people to be that kind of a person if that's not who they are. And a lot of, of the people who are most successful doing this are people who, they don't have, their ego's not tied up in it because it's really about how can I be of service to that community, to that issue, to that whatever. Um, and, and that is a particular type of person. And, I, and, and everybody's not cut out to do this, this work. And, and, you know, that's fine. It ain't the best work to be doing necessarily, you know? Because it's thankless lots of times. You know, we had, there was a... Um, this is. There was a, there was a scenario at, a, uh, at an activity I went to. I won't give any specifics. I'll try to be as non-specific as possible. But, you know, so there are these people from all over, and the person that was addressing them um, was telling them that, that was telling them about the mission that they had gone on and how, you know, Jesus Christ was the uh. reason that she was there to provide this for them, <laughs> whatever. All this, I mean, she was just going on and on and on. And I'm looking, and most of these people are Muslim. And I'm like, did you not pick that up? You, yeah, right. I mean, you know, you just, you know and, and it becomes very, yeah, it's a, it's a problematic thing when you don't hear. Can, if, if you have, uh, in, in, in Viola, but there is a, there is a, you talk about like make place, you know, has a certain kind of identity to it, you know, like going in and you make, make the space. But there's also like now a, a directive of uh, instead of change, making change, you exchange. So you are, you know, going in not with the idea you're going to change something, but you go there with the idea that you're going to have this exchange. You're going to share what you know from the perspective that you're coming from versus, you know, and, uh, you know, going in and, you know, leveraging them to be what you think, you know, is really going to help them right. versus, you know, that you, and I think that speaks to getting something back. Because if you're not getting something back, you're not exchanging. Mm -hmm. 